Genesis 2, verse 15. And the Lord love took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And the Lord love commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord love said, It's not good that this man be alone. I'll make him a helpmate for him. I'm glad he did that. And out of the ground the Lord love formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Now we have always milked that down to the place where we said, well, you know, that's when the elephant became the elephant, and that's when Adam called the tiger the tiger, and, and then God created the, the little deer, and he took the little deer, and he walked the little deer over to Adam and said, Adam, what would you call this? And he said, ooh, that's a deer. And so the little deer went running. God created the body of the deer. That deer didn't have any more life in it than Adam's body did. And then he took it. He didn't walk it. He took it to Adam. And Adam called life forth in that animal. Because Adam was responsible for the life of all life on this planet. Well, I don't know whether I believe that or not. I don't care. The only reason you don't is because you're afraid. Your religious fear reached up and grabbed a hold of your mind and said, I mean, you think God going to kill you if you believe that? the Godhead gets together and say, let us make man, then what are they producing? They're producing gods. Now, I got to hit this thing real hard in the very beginning because I ain't got time to go through all this. But I'm going to say to you right now, you are gods, little g. You are gods because you came from God and you are gods. You're not just human. The only human part about you is this physical body that you live in. Philippians chapter 2. And in Philippians chapter 2, I want you to look at verse 5. <laughs> look at this now. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you. Uh, a, a better way to say that is let this attitude be in you. Uh, let this mind, let this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So now, what mind, what attitude uh, is it that you want me to make sure that this, this same attitude is in me? What is what is this way, this of, way thinking? of thinking? What is this this? And, and you'll be able to move in, even into confidence that you want me to have here. Yeah. Verse six. Here it is. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Let this attitude that was in Jesus be in you. Let this way of thinking that was in Jesus be in you. Let this confidence that was in Jesus be in you. Jesus didn't think it was robbery. He didn't, he didn't think it was a dishonor. 
He didn't, he didn't think it was, was, oh, the, you ought not think that way. No, he said, let this attitude, let this way of thinking be in you, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, if I'm to take what he said here and, and, and put it on, then my whole attitude now should be, I have equality with God. That's my way of thinking. Now, somebody says, well, it's hard to think that way. Well, keep saying it. I have equality with God. Talk yourself into it. You've talked yourself into other things. Talk yourself into this attitude. Talk yourself into this way of thinking. Talk yourself into it until you build a confidence uh, on the inside of you that I have equality with God. Now, when the guy says, the storm's coming over, get ready, it's going to blow your house down. You go out on the porch because you have this way of thinking on the inside of you, and you say, peace, be still. You'll not cause any destruction on this property. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Then he moves on down to verse 15, and he says, why? That you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. <laughs> this is God's desire that we shine as light. He said, notice, he says, we're not going to shine as lights until we change the way we think. We're not going to shine as lights until we accept our equality with God. We're not going to shine as lights until we stop thinking that being equal with God is a dishonor and a robbery.